hi guys welcome back to my channel um from my title you could see that i am going to be reviewing harlem shuffle by colson whitehead today um before i jump into my review though i just want to say thank you to everyone that watched my um bookstagram slash booktube newbie tag and my other book review of anxious people um I'm just like, I was super excited to just get through reading this book because I want to just keep putting more and more videos out there um, and like not lose my stamina and just like build a really nice community because the people that read, um, that watched my first video, they were like, yo, you seem like you have cool vibes, which I do. Um, and uh, if I must say so myself, and I just want to like make sure that I'm not just like slacking on my reading. So I got through this one pretty quick and I'm just excited to jump in and give you guys my thoughts on it. So here we go. Um, overall, oh, before I start, this book is, I'm going to, in this video, I am going to do um, some spoiling. So if you don't want any spoilers, I would suggest you like don't watch this video. But if you've already read this book or you like to like know exactly what a book is about before you read it, then you're in the right place. Okay, so overall, I would give this book four out of five stars. Um, I don't usually give books five stars. Like it has to be like really like um, really good. The books that I have given five stars, I would say they were like they made me feel like um, like intense emotions. So when I still had my bookstagram, I gave um, the book A Thousand Splendid Suns five stars because there were points when I literally had to just like put the book down, take a breath, come back. Like those types of books, I would give five stars because they like truly like speak to me. Um, but if a book is like, you know, interesting, I want to like finish, I want to see what happens, I would give it like four stars. Um, so this one is definitely like a solid four, in my opinion. Some people might say five, some people might say less. This is just my opinion. Um, this book, Harlem Shuffle, is different for me because it, so usually I read books that are written by like African or Caribbean women. Um, and this book, Colson Whitehead, um, is a black man. And I feel like I haven't really re read books that were written by men. So that was super interesting. I was like, oh, different. Um, let's see what it's about. And not only is it written by a black man, but the lead um, character and like most of the characters in this book are black men. So it was like totally different from what I'm used to reading. Um, and I think that's good for like, you know, diversify, read a little something different from time to time. Um, so that was really, really cool. Um, I loved that it was based in um, New York City in Harlem. Obviously, the name is Harlem Shuffle. Uh, I like that because I could relate to it a lot because I did work in Harlem for about like two or three years when I was still in college, um, very close to 125th Street, where a lot of the stuff in this book is happening. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, like I know that street. Oh yeah, I know that area. Even though this was like based in like the 1950s or whatever and like past times it's still like cool to be like oh yeah i know like i i i could see exactly where they were talking about whereas like most other books you don't truly know like the area and like what's going on um i also can tell that this guy colson whitehead i haven't read anything from him besides this but i can tell that he's like i i want to almost like search and see like if he went to school for like writing or like like majored in like literature or something because his like his writing is really good like his vocabulary is really good um most times when i'm reading books if i don't know like what a word means i'll just like pause and like search it or like ask siri um and i had to do that a lot for this i was like what does this mean what does that mean which is good because like you should be reading books that like teach you new words and like expand your brain cells or whatever um so i could tell that he was like pretty skilled um before i jump into like the overall like summary of the book 
um i want to just talk about like this the themes that i noticed i have them written down um there's violence um this is harlem this is the 1950s 60s there's gangs there are like um drug dealers there are people murdering people there's all types of crime um theft uh robbery burglary so that's like a big theme um in the book i don't know if people really like are um offended by those types of themes but i just wanted to like let you know in case you don't want to read about things that have those kinds of things in it you know what i mean um there's also like some type of like internal duality slash battle going on in like the main character's brain um as of, like when i when i tell you the summary you'll see what i'm talking about like him trying to be good versus him trying to like do bad things um and then also like the effects of a parent's lifestyle and like the things that they do or say that pass down to kids and like affect who the kids are so that type of like um generational passing on of traits there, there's definitely a better word for what i just said generational past heredity okay forget it um and then just like overall like family dynamic um the main character has a cousin in this book who causes him a lot of turmoil i don't know how i really feel about that character but i'm pretty sure like people can relate to that of like having that one friend who's like always like doing bad things and you have to like save them or like rescue them or that one family member who's like the black sheep basically um and they always just bring in drama and doing stupid stuff um so that's definitely like very relatable i feel for like a lot of people so those are the themes those are the things that i liked um and like noticed uh i didn't really have any dislikes about this book um there aren't really the chapters aren't super long um they did y'all just hear my airwick just moving on there's a lot of noise happening outside here the heat was banging cars are racing outside the wind is howling so just bear with me okay um yeah no what was i saying the chapters aren't super long i feel like it's good like interesting read like you want to get through it i do have um some pages like highlighted just because i liked those quotes and i and i'll read a couple for you guys as we go um but i wouldn't really say like this book is like a like a book club pick i feel like there's not really there are things to discuss but not that much in my opinion maybe like people who are uh like m like more developed readers can pick out like super specific things to like talk about but from my point of view i don't think so all right so let's get into a quick summary of the plot so harlem shuffle is mostly about um this guy his name is raymond um ray for short and he owns a furniture store on 125th street uh he's trying to be like you know a, a good upstanding black businessman in the 1950s in like this really like sh not shady area but like if you know about harlem in those times you know it's like hot right that's the best way i could describe it drugs crime that kind of thing um he has a wife he has a kid a daughter and another one on the way and he's like really priding himself on being like a good black businessman like he's he gives people like stuff on layaway and he has good deals and he's not trying to like beat them over the head and he's also like in competition with like the white furniture stores um so he's just trying to do like good stuff um to just make sure that he's like you know he's he him and his family are like set up for success so he's been doing good um he even like says in the book like I might be like doing this type of stuff but i'm not like crooked um and i'll tell you what type of stuff he's talking about but he's mostly trying to be good right boom in comes his cousin freddie now freddie is just this drama just drama from day one freddie knows that raymond has this like truck that he does for his business and so like before this time 
all Fre all Raymond would do is like occasionally like go to like those like pawn shops and like sell stolen things that Freddie brings for him because Freddie's obviously a crook, right? So that's like his petty not not, not like petty crime, but like that's his only like bad side. Like Freddie will bring in like a ring or like a chain for him, and then Raymond would go to his people that he knows on the low. Um, and he would get it like he would get money for it um but that was all he was doing for a minute and then one day cousin freddy comes and he's like bro i know you have a truck i need your help with this job obviously the job is like they're like robbing a hotel like hotels apparently um have like these safes that the the people i guess now is back in the day because now you have your own safe in your room but they had like a room with a safe that all the um, guests would just like have like their own little locker or whatever and they would save their stuff in there. So they were going to rob that hotel and take all the stuff. Raymond, of course, is like, why? Like, I'm, I'm trying to be good. Like, why are you doing this? You know, I have my furniture store. I have my clients. I have my wife. I have my kid. Uh, I have another one on the way. Like, why? And that's where you could first like see like he agrees to do it by the way so that's where you can first see like even though he knows like he shouldn't be doing that it's like his cousin and he's like you know i don't i guess he feels some type of like personal responsibility for him um so he agrees to do it they do the job um obviously after they do the whole job the big guy in charge um one of the guys that was at the job ends up being killed so now raymond is like am i next why would freddie bring this drama to me now people getting killed I'm like what am i gonna tell my wife like he is it's just too much right so the the guy who orchestrated the whole job because it's not even freddie he's just one of the men and he just want to bring raymond in he's not even the big boss the guy who orchestrated it ends up like trying to come and get raymond they had to kill him they had raymond had to be the one to dump the buddy because he has the truck and so it's just so much drama so now raymond went from being a guy who has his own furniture stuff and a black businessman who's trying to do good now he not only was involved in a robbery now he had to like dispose of a buddy so he's just like getting deeper and deeper into the into the scene um all because of his cousin freddie and then simultaneously happening is like i said this is like set in harlem in the 1950s and 60s um and at that time like there were a lot of like black businessmen like um coming out and like they had this club called the dumas club i actually don't know if that was a real club or not um but it was like the elite like bankers and politicians and businessmen and like you wanted to be in that club because i guess like obviously you want to like build up the community um and so Raymond's father-in-law is in that club. And there's like some tension there because the father-in-law is like, you should try to be with the club. Like you, you're just a furniture man, like make it, make yourself bigger. Like just it's tension. So he tries to get into the club. Obviously there's some underhanded, you got to pay money, you got to, give me something i'll see if i can get you in type of vibe so he pays money um to get into the club and the person who took the money was like one of the bigger guys in there he took his money and then told him sorry like you can't get into the club so raymond is like are you kidding me i just spent 500 dollars. i just gave you this bribe money and then you can't like you can't give it back to me and he like tries to like go back and get his money and the guy's like no so Raymond is like, bet, revenge time. So this is interesting because when I started, I said that there's like some type of like generational passing on of traits from parents to children. Raymond's father was like a big, like crook, criminal. People knew him in Harlem. So at that moment when the guy was like trying him and like playing him, he was like, oh, bet, like you forgot who my father was like, you know? So he has like that type of like duality in him. And then it like triggers it and he's like, okay, your revenge is mine. So he orchestrates this whole plan. Um, ultimately, like 
gets the guy like set up with this prostitute like so that his name would be like tarnished um so there's like drama there and then i'm not i'm not there's so much drama i'm just trying to like give you like a quick synopsis and then at the also happening um the cousin freddie gets caught up with this like white um like dutch white boy well not boy like man who has like kind of like separated himself like from his rich family and like doing drugs obviously and they become really close friends and i guess the boy wanted revenge from his family because they were treating him like the black sheep and they were like making him go to like all these like psych wards and putting him on meds and he like decides to like steal something from him and from what i told you about freddie of course he's gonna like go with it so freddie goes along with the plan steals something brings it to raymond and i'm just like why why is raymond still allowing this obviously the whole dutch family has their own rank their own like gangs their own clubs they come get raymond they like threatening him they come to his store he has to get protection it is just a whole bunch of drama all because of freddie so freddie like just get it together um i don't want to tell you what happens at the very very end because i do want to leave like a little bit of surprise but someone dies so there you go um the whole thing was like honestly it was like a mystery very like like a thriller like you suspense like you want to see what goes on um i was very surprised that because there were many times when this guy um raymond was sneaking out of his house after his wife went to bed like multiple nights and that one point i was just like there's no way my husband is sneaking out multiple nights and i'm just like like you know i feel like that little piece was like unrealistic because in the whole book like the wife never like realized what was going on but maybe he was that sneaky who knows um but yeah hollow shuffle colson whitehead i recommend um if you're into like suspense and thrillers and you want to like find out like what happens four out of five stars for me um i'm I'm reading another book. Oh wait, before I before I get into the next book I'm reading, I'm getting excited. The book, the some of the quotes that I wanted to like read for you guys from the book, uh, they like they're like really good. Okay, everyone has secret corners and alleys that no one else saw. What mattered was your major streets and boulevards, the stuff that showed up on other people's maps of you. So that's kind of like him talking about like on his major streets and boulevards, he's like this like. Harlem, 125th Street, upstanding, black furniture store owner type of vibe. But the secret corners and alleys is like, you know, like he has his dad's like mentality and he can be like revengeful and do crime and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> another one, two. Uh, this one was funny. It was just like random. It was like you had to be part animal to live in New York City. <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny because it's like... People that come to New York City, like my friends when they come from Trinidad or like just from other states, it's just like, yo, New York is wild. Meanwhile, like people on the trains like doing crazy stuff and New Yorkers are just like, <laughs> headphones in, like, I'm just like, mm hmm meanwhile somebody over here like screaming like it, it, it that was funny because it's just like you maybe we are a pot animal who knows um the other one was maybe it wasn't envelopes the city ran on but grudges and payback um the envelopes that they're talking about is all the like secret money that goes around for like protection or for safety um but they're saying like maybe it's not just envelopes that's run in the city but actually like grudges and payback and like that kind of stuff that people are trying to do uh and then the last one too thought that was i thought that i thought was highlight worthy was from from raymond himself he says he'd spend so much time trying to keep one half of himself separate from the other half and now they were set to collide but then they already shared an office didn't they 
he'd been running a con on himself. So that's just him trying to like be like, I don't know why I was trying to separate these two like pieces of myself. Like I'm in the same office, like I'm in the same thing. Like I might as well just be who I am, you know? Um, so I like this book. I, I would recommend this book if you, if you want to get into a nice little thriller, like I said, little suspense, um, but a very good read. And that's my review. Uh, the next book that I'm reading is The Selfless Act of Breathing. Of course, I got that from someone on my Instagram. And then I also have Black Cake right there that I wanna read quick because that's like kinda new and I wanna like just put a book review out there since it's like kinda hot right now. Um, but that's about it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, comment, let me know if you've read this book or if you now want to read it. Uh, pretty sizable book, but not too, not too terrible, like an easy read. Um, and I will see you the next time for the next book review. Bye y'all.